Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. We're going to be taking a look at the GPD Win Max again. This is GPD's latest gaming handheld. Right now we're going to be taking a look at uh, Linux. This is specifically the latest version of Ubuntu. This is 20.04, the LTS version. The latest Ubuntu one. The only thing that I've done different is that I have installed the latest kernel. Um, so if we check that out, you can see that we are on 5.7 RC5. Um, uh, you can see all the stuff that is loaded at the moment for the most part and this is kind of important right here so you can verify that I am um, to get it to load you to get to install Linux there's, there's two problems right now uh, the NVMe part of it when the WinMax comes with NVMe I could not see the disk um, I have installed a SATA SSD because people were asking me it does see the SATA part of it so you can see right here the SATA controller um, so I didn't really have to do anything there to get a Linux to install on a disk but when I had NVMe on it didn't it wasn't immediately available so uh, unfortunately I have to go and redo everything to kind of see what would be necessary to get NVMe uh, to be uh, installed on but right now I can verify that you can install against the SATA controller uh, optionally, if you go into the BIOS you and set the uh, micro SD, this part right here, your little micro SD card, if you go into the BIOS and set that as a hard disk, you can actually install to micro SD if you wished. Right now, I have that. Um, let's see, what would it be? So, this is what you can kind of see where we are right now. Um, and I am just kind of sharing the space with Windows, although I'm going to wipe this out right now, but you can see this is the Western Digital disk that I put in just recently, and it is two terabytes, and then it also sees this 128 gig micro SD card that I have as well. Um, but again, NVMe right now, if you just try to install Linux, I, I'm relatively positive it's not going to work for you. Um, it, there's going to need to be fixes need to be made for that to become available. Uh, however, SATA SSD does work. Uh, we are, we do see the Thunderbolt part of this as well. So if we were to just do Thunder, Thunderbolt, manage Thunderbolt devices, uh, we'll unlock this. This does look like, unfortunately I don't have it available right now, but this does look like, you know, number one, it sees it. Number two, it looks like it's ready to actually interface with it. So I've already verified it works on Windows. I would, I would wager that it's just going to work here. Uh, I have not tested this yet. The critical part for me right now is to get, right now the syncing issues and all the other stuff uh, that I have set is just getting into a workable state so that I can actually use it on the display itself. Uh, otherwise it's been, um, it's it, it's not, out of the box you're not gonna just have it just work. The, uh, the touch part of it is, so this works just fine. There's a lot of things that do just work. So right now you can see that I do have RJ45 plugged in. And if you were to take a look through this list, you would see that it's actually right there, Ethernet controller, Realtek. That is working. I verified that. Wi-Fi is working. It also sees that as well. You can see the Wi-Fi 6 AX200. So for the most part, all of the components are working. The most critical bit is the display itself, uh, where we have this. It's basically just a sync issue. And you can see that it's not rendering correctly. So for my, the way that I see it is that it, you, we're really just gonna have to kind of step through, maybe it's just frequency, maybe it's a, a set of frequencies, um, something that needs to get done. But basically, if we, let me go back out of here, terminal, go to X render, uh, oh, I don't, oopsie doodle, had a little thing in there. So, um, Oh, I also have HDMI connected. I could show you that real quick. I'll go ahead and turn the screen on. Hey, uh, you can see that I have HDMI connected right now. And if we look up, uh, give me one second. Alrighty. And just so you can see that that is working. This is working on my, my 55 inch OLED right now. And this is working as it should. So go over here that again yes let's keep those changes and we'll move this back over here just so you can kind of see uh, and if we go to LG electronics LG TV you can see that all of this is working just fine so the HDMI 
HDMI out portion is going to work just fine as it should. Uh, largely the issue is for us all of the built-in display stuff because of that adapter. So um, right now I've only spent about 30 minutes kind of tooling around with this uh, and I don't really I have a lot more stuff that I have to test so um, I'm gonna probably put shelve this for a bit. Um, mostly I just wanted to kind of just show you that all of the built-in display stuff is working. Um, additionally, if we look here, I'm going to go here and you can see the little mouse. Let's go here. So even the controller mouse mode, which is right here, right there, is working. Let's, let's focus in on that. There we go. This mouse mode is in mouse mode right now, so that's working. Let's see if I can see if the game controller loads up. All right, and we're back. So it's probably something that I messed up, but it's it's working now. So the only thing that had to be done uh, was numerous because potentially I just, you know, squashed the hell out of this. Anyway, this is, you can see it's working. So if we get out of here, uh, if we went to list USB, uh, we can see the controllers right here. But if I had installed Xbox driver, uh, which probably wasn't necessary and I screwed myself over, um, you can see that nothing is here. So basically what you have to do is if you do LSUSB, you can find the ID right there. And then if you uh, do device by ID here and then say the type is 360, it works. Uh, so more than likely, nothing needed to be done. Um, and if we go into like gamepad tester, so you can see I'm pressing that and then this is coming up. So it detects all of this junk controllers. Let's see if we, we don't really have any nice little thing here. Let's see if we can, let me go ahead and uh, retro. Okay, Xbox gamepad. Okay. So that kind of auto configured, which is nice. And just to clarify, you know, you can see that it is in, uh, that. You can see that it is in gamepad mode. Obviously, it wouldn't be in gamepad mode because if I did mouse, like I'm using the analog stick right now, and if I switch to mouse mode, this becomes WASD. Um, normally, it's so this is up, up, you know, down, but usually right over here. All right, well, this is no longer working. This would become so if we go here, this is WASD. So you can see up here that here so you can focus. This is just WASD in mouse mode. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, everything does work. Um, I probably screwed myself by messing around with too much stuff. Uh, the controller does work. I mean, you can just see that I just did it right here. I just needed a, about 10 minutes to kind of make that go. Um, but that's probably because I did it to myself. The main problem right here, let me make this rattle, sorry about that is that we have to make sure that the main display is working correctly, working as it should. Uh, because as, I, as far as I can see, most everything does work just fine, even the touch, which normally never works. This usually is busted. Usually the offset is way off, but this is working as it should. Um, RJ45 is working, gigabit. Um, literally everything is working. Uh, I haven't tested Thunderbolt 3 with eGPU, but it does, you know, it does detect it. We see it in when we list it, and when we go into settings, it shows the settings that it's available. I'd wager that it does work just fine. Um, but yeah, so largely it just seems like someone's just going to have to spend the time to figure out the correct settings here for that. Uh, potentially it's just in XRender. We just need to kind of iterate through, or whoever can do that faster. Um, while I can make this work and go, um, this is not ideal because the colors are all off. This is more just a demo to show you that we're basically 95% of the way there. It's just to take that other 5% to get it to be perfect. And I'm not, I could potentially do it, but the amount of time that I'd have to invest to get it working versus someone who just knows what they're doing. Um, and I'm talking about, you know, like an actual Linux guru. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Um, for the most part. Everything is working. I am on the latest kernel, and on the latest kernel, there are some, well, insofar as just this EDP thing. It works. The 
Intel Ice Lake driver is running. Again, we can just show that here. We're not in um, VGA compatible controller, Iris Plus. Additionally, if I go here, let me, let me reset this. All right, so if I did Vulkan Info, I have installed Vulkan Info. I have installed the message drivers. So if we go up and then where is my pipe key? It's right over here. Grip uh, apostrophe. Key on this keyboard, uh, so we can see that we are on 1.2.131 here. So everything is loaded, things are working. Steam would work on here, it just would be with this weird hue color um, and offset a little. Largely, it's just right here 95% were there. Uh, so feeling pretty confident. I'm sure that once this comes out and someone that uses Linux all the live long day will be able to fix almost instantly because it's pretty fast when you do install Linux. The um, default, what do I want to say, the default configuration that Ubuntu is going to want to use is going to be broken. You're going to see a black screen, so you will have to use no mode set. Um, so basically, you're, you want to disable the Intel Ice Lake graphics to draw the screen. And then with that, it will render, but it'll be render, rendered like portrait style because this is a portrait display but at least you'll be able to install and get into the system. And then once you install, then you can start doing some tweaks like what I did to get to this state. Um, and then it's just the other 5%, but we're all there. Um, so yeah, it's it's looking pretty good. Um, I look forward to seeing other people get, getting this working. And then, um, you know, obviously take a look at Steam and, and uh, Proton because Proton has made some huge leaps and bounds lately. I had done some earlier videos on my Win 2, but that's it. I'll probably take a longer look at uh, Linux later on on the WinMax. I do still have quite a fair bit to do testing-wise on Windows, um, but that's it. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.